Welcome to keynote vision address session two and three. Let me introduce the session chairman, Professor uh, Prasad Bokil. Prasad Bokil is a faculty member at IDC School of Design, IIT Bombay. He has a PhD in the area of communication design from IIT Bombay. His thesis was on knowledge representation of grid in graphic design and its application for analogy based design. He has research interest in knowledge representation. Visual language and gamification for education. I now request Professor Prasad Bokil to be the chairman for the session two and three. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Radhika. Uh, yeah. So we have this uh, two keynote vision addresses today. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, "Design with Paper" by Aditi Bebel. Uh, let me introduce you, Aditi. Uh, Aditi is a good friend of mine. She is a book designer who experiments and explores the medium of paper. She has a background in communication design, uh, which she done, which she has done from IDC IIT Bombay. Uh, she runs her own studio, Aditi Bebel Design Studio, uh, established in two thousand thirteen. Uh, this studio is a communication works for communication design and craft. Uh, focus which focuses on creating hand handcrafted stories products and services uh, aditi bebel design studio under the label of bebel books focuses on innovation in book craft creating a wide range of handcrafted notebooks with innovative bindings limited edition artist books and paper sculptures so i invite aditi to give her keynote welcome aditi Hi. Um. Thank you, Prasad, so much. Thank you for inviting me here. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I like to give a little bit more background. Um, I live and practice uh in the city of Lakes, Udaipur, which is located in the Meva region of Rajasthan in India, and uh, we are really known for our culture, our food, our traditions, our forts, our palaces, our music. But most importantly, we are known for our um art, and um. that uh, working closely with art forms and craft forms here has really informed me and inf like inspired me in my practice so uh, today's talk which is uh, many within one is inspired by the miniature paintings and my experience with working with art craft and design uh, for over a decade now so the way i'd like to unfold uh, the idea is in six stages with six um or six pillars rather that i have come to realize that every time i begin a project and end a project these are the six steps that i kind of follow through and i'd like to share them with you the first is explore and create so um living in rajasthan it gave me an opportunity to sort of like interact with a lot of local artisans local makers and i've also come to realize that learning is not a singular process it's not only done in schools and by teachers but it is also in the interactions uh with your day to day life and uh with a lot of people who surround you in your everyday life so if you are able to explore the city that you live in you are able to gather the resources then you can really experiment in, within your work and can go deeper in the study and experimentations so for example this uh, project was uh, what you see on your screen was done with the city palace of udaipur where i interacted with master makers of mewar and uh, this particular uh, slide that you're looking at is uh, ram singh ji and his wife who were experts in the rajasthan folk art and together with in with conversations with exchanges of stories and ideas we together created the calendars which took a form of the book uh they were circular stories which were hand painted individually on each piece and the guests that visited and the entire workshop itself another such project that i worked on is uh, working with five different crafts to create one single product so understanding the cotton fabric where it comes from where the history of cotton the leftovers of cotton pieces can being converted into handmade papers and the process of understanding the material and 
the exploration of making different kinds of paper to a village which is located 40 kilometers from Udaipur. And uh, there they practice indigo dyeing and hand block printing on fabrics. So the entire uh, process of hot coal printing and coal press printing with, uh, with mud, which is called dabu, I kind of like was really fascinated and I started thought, thinking about ideas, how local resources can be put together to create something which is much more meaningful. Uh, at the end, the result was a sketchbook that we created, which was covered in the cotton indigo dyed hand block printed fabric which has these motives of the triangular motives that represent the mountain ranges of Udaipur, the Aravli ranges, surrounds Udaipur. And it kind of, the signatures signify the white city of lakes here. And it comes together where each individual sort of signature can be removed from the spine, but it connects the entire book. The concept coming together as, you know, multiple ideas and multiple crafts coming together to create an entire story. But individually, they are valuable themselves. So this was the first step where I encourage continuous exploration and creation. So you understand what is it that you enjoy or not. The second step, the second pillar that I would like to talk about is radical acceptance, which uh, in my journey, I've come to realize that while I was working with different art forms and craft forms, it's again not like a singular journey. During your interactions with people, your day-to-day -day life continues. And what happens is you're also faced with a lot of challenges that you particularly don't like about yourself. So for example, for me, I faced a lot of body shaming and that would always pull me back from my creations. That would always make me awkward. But what I realized is once you completely accept yourself, you can convert that into a very powerful tool for yourself and to be able to create something beautiful and meaningful for yourself. So this particular altered book, which is a genre of book craft, it's titled White Belly. It was uh, when I was going through the emotional ups and downs in my journey as a creative and to establish my studio and uh, the challenges that I had to face, I'd slowly started putting on a lot of weight. And slowly, this sort of like uh, visually sort of talks about it. But once the art was created, I was able to accept that part of myself and started working towards that. The third pillar that I want to talk about is through the lens of passion. And by that, I mean that a lot of times when we are going through the journey, we um, are really afraid of certain aspects for example, when I was growing up as a student, I was really afraid of subjects like geography and chemistry, um, sometimes even math, understanding what are the rules, regulations when I started the studio, so law. But slowly as I started exploring my passion and going deeper within my understanding of the craft form, it helped me unfold a lot of the subjects that I was afraid of in a very beautiful way. So because I had to travel with uh, my work to showcase, because Udaipur does, did not have and still does not have a very strong design community. It has a beautiful art community and craft community, but design community was always a miss. So I had to always take my work outside of Udaipur to showcase. And slowly, slowly, uh, geography in the most beautiful way started unfolding for me. I started understanding new cities, the locations, how the cultures are of those cities, how people interact, uh, what matters, the architecture of the city. So it unfolded something that I think I would have never picked up on my own. Similarly, chemistry. I think like my interaction with material understanding of how the interaction between say fabric and paper, metal and paper, paper and paper, uh, if I'm ever experimenting with a new glue, with a new tool, I have to always understand the chemistry of it and how it'll affect my work. And that's how I can sort of move forward with my, uh, with my idea. So the artist book that you see in, on your screen right now is um, coming together of a fine artist, Priyanka Berdia and me, where we wanted to talk about how a flower blooms 
and it is a story which is untold but it creates a lot of beauty it has a lot of pain but it also brings about the entire world to you so if one has to understand the deeper you go in your own subject the more easy uh, every other subject becomes for you the next uh, pillar that i want to talk about is the clarity of purpose so if you are able to actually go through the first three steps the first three pillars of continuously exploring and experimenting creating then um accepting yourself then understanding different subjects that actually matter to your um to your subject and what they can do um there is automatically a clarity of purpose that comes to you the why of anything that you are doing and you're creating so for me what was important slowly i understood was uh aligning all my verticals so my my uh, background in fine arts then my background in graphic design and then my background in book craft were always important to me but i was wor- working with them on a individual level but what uh, the when once i had the clarity of my purpose i think the one key point missing for me was community so i wanted to bring um, about i wanted to create that for myself regarding the subject and i created an artisanal community so together we've created um these artist books which are dedicated to like the classical dance form kathak and we studied it the first this screen that you see is an exploration into invitation design where the kathak performer was going to perform this particular set that particular evening and we wanted to bring in that idea into an unfolding of the dance form um so as the evening unfolds and as the dance unfolds for the audience we wanted them to have that uh, that thought to carry them to to save it um so these were hand illustrated and screen printed at the studio we uh, really enjoyed the success of that project so uh, we started thinking of the next project that we wanted to do and uh, to continue the same language of kathak we decided to create um, an edition of artist books again that could be received as coffee table books so uh, t- then it took uh, kathak rang took birth and uh, what you see on your screen is actually a process of coming together of almost 10000 custom handmade papers which was circular and we got the paper factory because we work on a zero wastage module so we got the paper factory to make a, a custom decal and frame for us so that the pulp is lifted in a circular form itself so uh, the illustrations were created at the studio again screen printed each illustration was printed one at a time pulled through the screen and so this was the result of the book it's an artist book on kathak it takes a form of the circle because we wanted to talk about the moon cycle the day and night and the circular nature of life and everything that begins comes to an end and the and therefore there is a new beginning the next pillar that i want to talk about is of gratitude because i've come to realize that it is one of the most important glues to the my practice like it is it is a very difficult thought to not just practice your passion but to be able to convert it into a legitimate a business and to be able to celebrate it time and again i think it takes a lot of people who support you coming together in different ways so from family to the team that you build to friends and extended family that support you and then to teachers who've given you a lot and who continue to give you i think it it's a very important practice to follow through where um, you are able to just express that you know what their support has meant uh, and w- what that has changed for you in your practice the last but the most important pillar for me and it also sort of concludes the cycle for me is sharing with joy uh everything that you one goes through and one has practiced if you're not able to sort of share it forward then uh i think it um 
it's not complete in a sense. For me at the studio, the new adventure that we are embarking upon is called Babel Fish, where um, we are designing games now for children to understand the fundamentals of design and uh, in a very playful way, things that I wish I had in my school days and I would have gotten more time and understanding of the subject from an early stage on and I would have been ahead in my practice and understanding of the world at large. Yeah, I would just like to conclude by saying thank you so much um, for this time and uh, yeah, please feel free to ask any questions that you'd like. Yeah. Thanks, Aditi. I have so we have. Yeah. Yeah, please, please. Ravis. Yeah. So, Aditi, thanks for coming. Uh, so, the last one, you know, you started on a very interesting topic, okay, uh, which has become very dear to us also that uh, how do you actually, you know, involve uh, students in the activities of uh, design, especially children? Okay. So, can you explain what actually you did there? Because it just kind of showed right. the starting of an idea, but we didn't actually get what you're trying to do there. Uh, can I'll you just, can you explain that a little more? Yeah, I'll just reshare the screen so that like I can go back to that yeah, slide. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so what I'm trying to do, sir, is um, uh, I'm actually uh, designing games, and we've we are almost reaching the last leg of the first game that we've designed. What we've done here is, um, so I worked um, with a miniature artist at the beginning. So I, this the first game is inspired by miniature art and Rajasthan itself, the storytelling tool um, of Carver. But uh, more, I was trying to mix a lot of things, but then I realized miniature painting themselves have a beautiful way of looking at life. So they bring in multiple uh, perspectives into one single painting and multiple timelines within one single painting again, right? So I wanted to give the same thought and idea where the board itself becomes like a miniature painting and it unfolds in a way where the four players that are working amongst each other, they are actually faced with different challenges in four different directions. And they are able to support each other to face their challenges. So it was bringing together of the book craft, which is the structure that you see here, and the miniature painting. And in design, the game is about identity design. How we are all children, like now, not just children, but I think everybody has multiple layers to their identity. And how a lot of times we want to like hide many parts of our identity and we just want to highlight one part which to us seems like acceptable to the world but through this game the idea also is to explore the different parts of your identity and to be able to accept who you are completely and then create take the next day, step and create it's still not complete uh, like i said we are at the last game a last stage of the um, game but did that make sense so like do you have yeah no I, I still couldn't understand how the kids would actually play this you know yeah it's it's a dice game so so okay. what so we are giving multiple options the key factors in identity design for example would be shape color uh the profession itself right so mm. you, you roll the dice and you get different options so when you you're faced with a particular context so the challenge has been created for you. And then what you create from that challenge is very subjective. And it kind of is uh, open to discussion. Then there is a discussion amongst the children. And then there is uh, somebody called the client, right, in the, in the game. Mm. So they would actually like question you. And then you will understand that there can be multiple right answers, like uh, exactly how design sort of works that there's no one right answer or one right solution so when there are multiple right answers it gives you many perspectives where, that's where like miniature painting and sort of the the real life connects the dots that can be talk about multiple things and what a person ends up choosing is in reference to their context and now their context also has multiple layers right so it's it's an understanding of that relationship between client, your own subject, your own understanding, and your understanding of the world. Thanks, thanks, Aditi. 
I I have one question, Aditi, uh, for you. Uh, so when you're showing your work, there there was this interesting, very interesting work about this uh, the tale of an unknown flower, yeah. right, where you worked with an artist, right? Yeah. So I I'm just curious, like so there is this collaboration where an artist is coming, and mm -hmm. who is creating these graphics, and you are working with the with the medium itself as a paper. Right. right. So how how did you work out like how how did this what was the conversation or how this collaboration worked? It's it's very interesting. Can you just share some light a uh, little more about that? Please? Yeah. So um, it was in fact like a very interesting idea for me also because this was my first collaboration on an artist book, and how the conversation started was very interesting because the person I collaborated with she has actually taught me history of art. So I've known her for a long time. She has been my teacher. And uh, I still remember from her uh, lectures, she was so passionate about her subject that, you know, when I actually traveled to Italy and when I was studying in Italy, I would go to the museums and I would look at the paintings and I would actually exactly know where the artist had left the hair of the brush. You know, like when you're using the brush and sometimes the, the hair just right. is on the painting. So it was so like she taught it so passionately. So we started talking on that note that, you know, how passionate she is about her subject and I am about uh, books and the structure and the, the format of it because it it's such an inclusive tool to use. If you think of it as a tool, then it can bring about like, you know, um, subjects like fine arts, subjects like graphic design, subjects like uh, book craft or education into one, right? which is so magnificent. Like a lot of times we struggle and we are just talking about one format and one medium, but multiple mediums coming together. So it was almost like unfolding of multiple aspects of your life so gracefully and so effortlessly. And because that structure opens in those four directions, we wanted to talk about how, you know, like the direction of North, South, East, West, like in a way the world opens up to you. Like, and I, what I said in the presentation is actually what I meant, right? Because for me, a lot of subjects were very scary. And uh, it they became so easy because, uh, because of practicing book arts. Because I looked through, the, to, towards those subjects through that lens, right? Like I would uh, think about maps, they would overwhelm me a lot. But once right. I started folding the maps, then, you know, I had right. to actually know where, where the folds right. are coming, where the crease lines are coming. So, and it was, uh, we both are very inspired by nature. A lot of our work is inspired by nature. So unfolding of the flower just seemed like this, you know, perfect metaphor for all of our, uh, the journey that we, the two of us have had where, you know, we've struggled and some portions, but we've bloomed very beautifully in some and how we've been able to, put it all together. Really. But did you work on a smaller prototype and then make the actual one? Was, or? Right. So it was it was very interesting because, you know, I was working on the structures from our conversation and I had no idea of what the imagery would come. And she would draw something separately on smaller papers and then we would put it together and we would realize, oh, this is not working out at all uh, for us. So it was right. uh, then slowly, slowly, we when we technically I had to explain her the entire process of how this book will come together, where technically all the uh, papers will be meeting. And at that point, we cannot make it look like it's uh, different parts coming together, but just one. So then the artwork then became, it was reverse engineering then. Uh, initially, right. it was a concept and then it was reverse engineering from there. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Great. Uh, so let's have a question from... Uh, Professor Ajanta. Hi, Prasad. Hi, Hi Aditi. Hello. Uh, first of all, congratulations for being featured at the Smithsonian. I think that got missed out from the CV. Okay. And I think it's such an honor for all of us to uh, see, uh, you know, a member of the design community being featured at the Smithsonian because it, even though we have so much good work in the country, we hardly ever get featured for all the obvious reasons and all reasons, not that obvious, but anyway, that holds a special place for us in our hearts for what you've done. And also because you've been at it for so many years, Aditi. You, I understand when you say the struggles I've gone through because you never gave up. You kept doing something that nobody really understood what it was, right? 
So on that note, and I uh, and a little uh, and a fine synergy with both uh, Professor Puvaya and Professor Bokil of uh, addressing two issues here. One, Professor Puvaya's okay. issue of children and uh, how they handle design, you know, and a popular word for that today is design thinking, but I think that whole uh, problem solving is a much more complex thing. We've reduced it to these terminologies. And Professor Bokil's idea of uh, how the process plays out, uh, that's his concern because he also gamifies problem solving. So he's concerned with how the underlying thing plays out because if it is, because, uh, because if it is abstract, then people may not want to attempt it. So I think in that regard, uh, Aditi, it may be a good idea to do a series. Maybe you do it, you know, how uh, you can use uh, on an online uh, presentation, actual visualization to show how, what, like a do it yourself kit. And then even adults will get interested, like teachers and all, and then they can pass it on to children. But my question here is, it's, it's actually more like an observation, but also a question that, you know, you spoke of three domains, which is fine arts, because you come from a fine arts background, then you came into visual communication, so that therefore design. And remember when we had that course on ethnography, etc., we actually, at those days, interaction design in IDC was played out through visual communication program, because the uh, interaction design program came just after that. So we were, did, we were doing interaction design, remember the real yeah. people? Yeah, the right project, uh, which you were a part of. Okay, so you had you have a fine arts background, you have a design background, you have a crafts thing now going right for you. Okay, and then you said, uh, this is it stands on community, you know, and within that specifically, you've taken Kathak. Okay, so one domain that has got missed out here, which I think you've done inadvertently, which is performance. So we have fine arts, we have design, we have craft, and we have performance converging into this community of Kathak. Mm. Now, my question here is, you know, these separations between the domains is a very modern industrial thing because for uh, the industrial paradigm, everything has to be separated out so that it, the machine is able to understand and replicate. The machine doesn't know how to do the convergences, the human does, and mm -hmm. uh, right? And so you are actually supporting a medium and you say that it is not a singular media, it is a convergence of media because you didn't want the separations to show in the final outcome of the flower, right? With your faculty member. So children, coming down to children, because uh, design thinking is being introduced into school and uh, it would be nice to actually take some of these as part of the uh, exercises. Children actually don't separate these things out. So you have a natural advantage in children. And when they take paper, they'll draw on the paper. So that's illustration and the sense design. They will craft it. So that's craft. And they think all kinds of weird things in their head. So that's like the, you know, the formation of an idea. So that's like the artist, the shilpi, basically. And then the performance is like they'll throw the airplane at each other. So that's like performance, right? And of course, they're always sharing it. So it's community. So I think it would be nice if you are able to put it together as a, as a kind of articulation for children mm. so that you can tell them you're already doing this guys, you know, and I'm simply putting it together for you so that you are also legitimizing all these domains into that activity they do that is dismissed by parents as and so, you know, if you can actually put out notes like these, that would be nice. Yes, absolutely. Um... I think some really, really valid points there. And I've always believed that the purpose is always higher than the, than the, you know, like the yeah. individual, right. And uh, I think we always, uh, as in the Asian philosophy or uh, to create was always in alignment with the purpose and not so much of a segregation between, you know, what is what and what is the definition of what. And I think, like you said, it, it was a very Western approach of sort of segregating the subjects. So I struggled with that a lot, Ajanta ma'am, like for a very long time, because I think I was asked that question. It didn't naturally come to me, but because I was asked, like, are you an artist? Are you a designer? Yeah. Are you a crafter? And I was 
constantly asked this and um, for some years it didn't bother me but after a time after a particular point it started bothering me and i it started affecting uh, my communication skills with uh, with clients because you know i would talk about uh, i would present my studio as a communication design studio but then i would also say that you know we also craft books and you know that can that's one service that we offer but it became quite confusing for the clients to receive that information and it took me a long time to realize that actually it, the segregation has been made so so strongly now yes but you have to address it even though if you don't agree to it um but you have to address it in a way and like you said it's everyone is already practicing it and especially when it comes to children they are seamlessly already like putting everything together because their idea is to play to learn through fun right so they are not like uh, thinking that oh this is like a lot of times i feel they don't even know this is play time and this is book time and those ideas are also being put uh, by parents into their mind that you know this is a uh, play time but you have to stop it at a certain point because you need to like now open a book and study what if like there is no difference between that they are just enjoying learning if they can find joy in learning be it through the medium of a book or a film or creating an aeroplane right like a play paper plane and playing with it if that segregation is not made i think the learning process would be really joyful and i think then then art will seamlessly become part of every other subject like science math it already is like there is typography in math there is illustrations in science biology chemistry right all of those so we we already exist in those <laughs> subjects but i think like lot of times uh, the separation is more for the parent to understand now that um we are sort of addressing all all the four pillars uh and it is making sense for for the idea to complete yeah. nicely said aditya and i think you would if you were practicing in europe today you would have been known across that continent to peter you they really do have a way of understanding these things you know one of our ex idcians uh, uh what's his name will be he's uh, he's in europe today and he's been there since last 20 years when i remember the name i'll tell you i you're doing the kind of work you know you have you guys are a similar over although the mediums are different um but uh, uh power power to you aditi please continue with this very very interesting domain in which you're working thank you thank you so much man it really means a lot thank you thanks so is if you have a question please raise hand uh, through zoom Uh, so, so Aditi, uh, I think we have a couple of minutes. So first, uh, I really want to say one thing that uh, I appreciate what you are doing, because one side where people are running after all these digital mediums, and slowly we see kids are even forgetting that how to use books and getting uh, engaged or immersed in books, where you are taking this whole experience of books to another level. and making them much more alive finding more meaning not just in a the text but also the paper the way paper is put up together the way they are it is bind together so everything which people just take it for granted you are giving meaning to every small detail of that book so it's a really amazing thing and i think people will find new reason to love books uh, even like uh, other than reading uh, i think that's what you are uh, kind of uh, achieving slowly Thank so uh, we we have one more question uh, i think we'll take that uh, barkha please go ahead yeah hi aditi great to see you guys and um, i don't have a question as such i just want to say that i just love the whole connection of the book along with the game the gamification of the book i think that's brilliant and i loved it thank so, you yeah great great work 
Lovely. Yeah, I think like uh, so one one because when Prasad was talking and now you're bringing it up, I want I forgot to address this during my presentation is that one more thing that is that has come to my notice after a long time is the vertical learning or understanding of a subject. And I think if you stick to one subject, whatever you may be passionate about, you will slowly slowly unfold that subject itself into it just opens up multiple ideas to you. Like game was. I designed my final year project in IDC was a game design project, yeah. but I didn't uh, go into that realm again uh, for a very long time. But because I was struggling to find a market uh, for the books that we were making, um, it automatically pushed me to think harder, to work harder and to come up with something which actually is more meaningful to the person who receives it as a medium, as opposed to just me enjoying it as my passion. So I think that's where like that ice has been broken and we're like wow. taken it to the next step and like making games and we'll see how it goes. I still don't have any answer. It's quite uncertain, but yeah, it's been an exciting one. So the thought started four years back uh, and to be able to put it together, it took like a 2020 and a COVID to come for me to like really commit to this idea and say that, okay, I'm going to take this forward still. And it's taken one year to put multiple iterations, multiple changes, because we've done a lot of user study in between with children to see that, you know, we were really trying to, like I was initially making it very complex because I was like, oh my God, it has to be opening in a certain way. It has to give this magical feeling. And then uh, the more user studies I did, I realized uh, children don't want that. Children just want simple play. You know, they just want to enjoy their time. They just want like permutation combinations thrown at them and just like a challenge that they can solve and they enjoy the process. And during, in, in that process, they just learn, like the most incredible identities have been made, which I think as a professional designer, probably I haven't so thought. Unpredictable, of right? It's absolutely unpredictable. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, it, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's been really fun. It's been really fun to yeah, explore that. Thank you, Varka. Thank oh, great, you. Great, great. Prasad, I remember yeah. the name. Can yeah. I just tell her? Yeah, 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 please. Okay. So, Aditi, I remember the name. His name is Satyendra Pakhale. Oh, okay. Of course, Satyendra was a student uh, largely when product. Uh, uh, product design was the main uh, thing about IDC. And Satyendra has uh, lived in Europe for at least uh, 20 years now. Okay. Uh, you, uh, it would be great if you got in touch with Satyendra. If you're not able to, I can do that for you. And I also feel that, you know, the kind of work you're doing, you should try and push it to be products located at design stores. Because whenever I travel to all these places, I will go visit the design stores. And they usually products at design stores like MoMA, Denver, wherever, London Design, you know, the Design Museum, the design store products are always quite expensive. So why not? You know, you make a good thing, you go sell it there and then internationally people get to know about you. So I would like you to do that, Aditi. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Of course, definitely. I mean, we've just, with Babelfish, I am like really understanding the entrepreneurial aspect of running a studio much deeper because there is a purpose to it and there is, I, I do think that we've come out with something that is much more meaningful to the client as it is to us in creating it. Um, we will soon launch a Kickstarter campaign. That's the idea right now. So I'll keep everybody in loop. I think. So, okay. So uh, let's take one quick question uh, from Professor Nanki. I think that's the hi, only Prasad. time we have. Uh, hi, yeah. yeah. It's hi, uh, great to meet and thanks to Typography Day to, you know, uh, let me meet an old friend of mine. And uh, Aditi, it's wonderful work. I think the souls of the book are really, uh, you know, the way each and every project has been weaved. I feel society has a lot to take from it. And I'll just add on to what, uh, you know, Ajanta Ma'am and Professor Puvaiya and somewhere even Prasad have touched upon that, uh, why not make this entire process detailed out for children? So, especially considering uh, the question on the, your last project in which, uh, yes, it has a materiality, it has a concept and it's playful. But then when it comes to a child's mind and how uh, a child is approaching it, uh, can we simplify matters there? And somewhere even bring the process, uh, you know, as part of the mm. play. So really congratulations. And I would also like to congratulate you for Smithsonian designation. Great, yeah. Congrats. 
ओके सो थैंक्स अदिति थैंक्स अलॉट